Hi everyone, I'm Bob Polensky, Master of Wine. Today I'm in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I'm gonna be opening a 60-year-old bottle of wine. I've had this bottle for about 40 years. It's my 60th birthday. It feels like the right time to open it, so I'm gonna give it a go. Now there's no telling how things may go when you have a bottle of wine that is well beyond what you think its typical aging potential is. This may end up being a bit of a novelty, maybe a, a time capsule of sort. I'm hoping it still retains some of those positive attributes because it's been stored very, very well. And there's a lot of indicators that show me that there could be some signs of life here. Now the wine itself is a Fosse Chianti Classico from 1963, as I mentioned. Generally speaking, this is not a very good vintage around the world. And if you could have any type of vintage charts that go back that far, you'll, you'll see that it's sad most everywhere, with the exception of the Douro for port. Now, there are a few things that are working in, in this wine's favor. For one, I know it's been stored well for a good 40 years. Prior to that, it's completely in question. I, I don't know. But what I can say is this, and this is an encouraging sign. You'll see the fill level is quite good. It's just below the neck. For a wine of this age, that's actually a very good sign. I've had many bottles that have been 50, 60 years old or so, where that fill level has been into the shoulder. So that's a good sign. The other is, as I take a, a brighter light and I actually can get a, a look into the wine, uh, it does not have a lot of that ambery or brown color to it. It retains a lot of the red color, so that's a very positive sign as well. Just a quick break mid-video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so right now. If you see a red button down below, hit that button. You'll be dialed into all my upcoming videos. Also, if you have any comments, please post them down below. I read everything that's posted. I try to follow up on every one of the comments. It's much appreciated. Thank you so much. Now, 1963 was a year of some major events. Uh, it was the year that the Kennedy assassination happened. It was the year that Martin Luther King made his most famous speech. On some things that are much more trivia based, it was the year that the push button phone was introduced, uh, the year that the Alcatraz Penitentiary in California was closed, and it was the year of the introduction of the lava lamp. The bottle itself has some interesting packaging characteristics. There's a metal band that goes over the top of, of the neck it's affixed by a piece of wire. It's firmly in place. Uh, the vintage is noted on the top with 1963. Also on the side, there's the Consorzio uh, indication for the Chianti Classico as well. As mentioned, I've had this wine for a very long period of time. It was shipped from the U.S. to Malaysia about two months ago. I wanted the wine to have plenty of time to rest before it actually was going to be opened. Since its arrival here, it's been stored in great temperature controlled conditions. And a few days ago, I stood the bottle upright, just in case if there was any sediment, I wanted it to work its way down into the base of the bottle. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I'm actually gonna prepare the bottle for opening. Uh, you can see that I've already removed the, the wire bands along with the strip that, that went along the top of the bottle. I've also removed the entire capsule. And the reason for that is, typically I would not remove the entire thing, but with this bottle I am, this has got a lot of weight to it, and I'm not a, an expert on this, but I believe this is a lead tin alloy. And I wanna make sure that there is absolutely no contact in, with the lead with the wine itself when I pour. So what I've done now is I've taken some lemon juice on a, on a cloth, and I'm gonna wipe the top of the bottle. That lemon juice will help to eliminate any of the residual that has been on this uh, bottle. If you have some baking soda, you can also use that as well, but make sure you give this a good cleaning. Now, lead capsules have been used for a very long period of time. They were phased out in the 1980s. And I recall a story years ago when I, had, I was working in a, a cellar from a, a gentleman and he had a lot of very old bottles of wine. And the story that he told me is, Wines from years ago had lead capsules because lead was actually something that prevented rodents from getting to the cork. So hopefully you don't have that problem today. Now, what I'm using to open the wine is just the old school waiter's corkscrew. I always have this as a backup, the two prong corks puller. Oftentimes with old corks, they can be brittle, they can be very fragile. And the most 
careful process, you can still break the cork. So I'm going to have this as a backup. And with the waiter's corkscrew, very gentle, down the center of the cork, make sure it's centered and straight. And just by the feel of this, I can tell that this cork is going to be a bit spongy. Keep in mind, it's got a lot of mileage on it, so that would not be a surprise. I want to see if I can get the seal to pop without, ooh, not bad. It's splitting a bit. Yep, I can, I can see that the actual cork has split. Even though I'm trying to be very delicate with it, it has split. So I'm going to use the two prong at this point, and hopefully I can extract everything without a whole lot of drama. Put the longer prong in first. Push it in slowly, then work the other side in. This is the shorter side. Gentle rocking motion. I'm gonna extract part of the cork. The other part is not gonna come out. Give it one more try, but I think it's gonna go into the bottle. <laughs> it is. Okay, not ideal, but we're still gonna work with it. Typically with wines like this, wines that I know are gonna be very, very fragile, wines that are most likely gonna be over the hill. Typically, I don't decant these, especially if they're not showing much sediment. With this one, since the cork went in, I'm gonna decant. And to decant, all you're doing simply is one long, slow, continuous pour. Okay, so at this point, the wine's been decanted. The little bit of sediment has been left behind. And I'm gonna give this a try after all these years. Uh, the color is still somewhat red. Uh, when you look at the, the core, it's got some decent depth of color. There's some fade at the rim, a little bit of an ambery tone, which is certainly not a surprise. Aromatics, uh, smells a bit like, like prune, a bit like dried fruit. It's 100% tertiary notes at this point. There, there is no bright red fruit, which is, which is quite obvious. Uh, low alcohol. You know, I noticed on this bottle it shows 12.5% alcohol. In today's world, that is very, very low. Aromatics are not all bad. I mean, it, it's, it's got some interesting characteristic, uh, a bit mushroomy, but it does not smell like it has turned and gone bad. Now on the taste, there is a bit of volatile acidity, but it still has some roundness, some weight, some decent length. This is not, not bad. Uh, it still has some shred of life to it. Now, typically with old bottles of wine like this, especially wines like this that are very, very fragile, if you give these another half hour or 20 minutes, it's possible the wine could go into decline very, very quick. But based on the fact that this is from a, a not a well-known producer, certainly a very poor vintage, and the wine has a tremendous amount of mileage to it. This is actually holding together quite well. Uh, it's the last bottle of 63 that I have of any sort. So again, for the 60th birthday, I thought I'll give this a try. Uh, this is not the type of wine that I would, would necessarily choose to sell her away for long term, but for, for a special birthday bottle, I'm feeling okay about it. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. Until next time, cheers.